It is Saturday, April 22nd, I believe. It's about 7.30 or 8 in the morning. Uh, when I left the house this morning, it was 54 degrees outside. Here comes the puppies. <laughs> this grass is ridiculous. So I wore my boots because it was dewy. And you can see my pants are soaking wet from the dew on the grass. So, yeah, it's not really a problem. Uh, the sheep are back there with their lambs. You can't see the lambs because the grass is so tall. The cows were hanging close to the bulls. I did not separate the bulls from the cows, and I'm probably not going to. It's... So some of the bulls got in before the move uh, yesterday morning. And I figure if, the, if they were going to cause any damage, the deed's been done. So I'll leave the bulls with the cows now. If I get February calves, it's probably okay. Um, hopefully it'll be late February, early March. Which is probably a fine time to be born. But I would prefer it later. Um, so anyway, this grass is ridiculous. Oh, you can see the cow prefers to eat leaves over grass, but whatever. Uh, the grass is super tall right now. It's going to get taller. Um, you can see the colors changed. That um, What used to be green mountains are like now just slightly darker green. And now the rest of the grass is caught up. This is 24. I've noticed the manure has firmed up what little I saw. I should show you what they did at the last area. So I left them there more longer than I wanted to, twice as long as I wanted to. I wanted to move them last night. But because of my schedule, I can't do that anymore. So this is what they did. that puppy just covered with water and again it's not much they trampled some they ate some most of it they couldn't get to even with more time in this area so yeah anyway um, new plan about moving because of my schedule I can't do Thursday night moves so I'm gonna do Monday evening and Friday morning so Monday evening, they're going to get a new row. And then Friday morning, they're going to get a new... Well, not a row, a section. Right? So there's three sections on each half of my field. This is the first section. And the second section is to my right here. Just this way, that second section. And third section will be all the way over there, near the, near the fence. So this Monday evening... Monday morning, they'll get the last section of this row. This, this section, the last cell of this section. And then Monday evening, I'll move them to this row. And then I'm going to set up a, a lane so they can get back to the water. Because I don't have water along that fence line. The water's along this fence line. So, that's what's going to happen. Anyway. Yeah, I gave them a double section, double cell. To make up for what I didn't do and to get them on schedule. So they have plenty of land. And the grass here is all fantastic. Some places it's taller than others. But I don't have any reason to complain. My neighbor bull wants in with the cows. Look at that tree. I should probably rope that tree off so they don't go under it until summertime. But, uh, yeah. Um, among the grass, there's all kinds of other things growing. Um, I'm not sure what all of it is. But I did see a little bit. Of, uh, here's some clover. There's some clover down there. And I thought I saw some hairy vetch, too, in different places. If you don't believe me about the clover here there's clover right there so and this is something else I'm not sure what that is 
but uh, the idea is that the legumes will fix nitrogen into the soil. Oh, here's a bunch of clover. Yeah. And the exact method that they fix nitrogen isn't, at least I don't understand it, but uh, I've heard different stories from different people. Um, one story is that the uh, nitrogen fixing legumes, actually they, they suck the nitrogen out of the air using their roots and some fungus and bacteria and stuff. And they turn that into protein that they use to grow. And so they grow well in low nitrogen conditions and they produce additional protein that they need. Then the cows come by and eat that protein and poop it out. And that's how you get more nitrogen in the soil. The um, kind of a side quest, I guess, a side process is that the legumes are just trampled into the soil or they die and decompose. And so that's how the nitrogen gets into the soil. Either, it's either through the cow's belly or, or through other systems. The other one that I've heard, um, and again, I have no evidence one way or the other, so don't rely on me as a source. Those aren't clovers. Those are something else, though, right there we're looking at. Is that the roots between the grass and the, the clovers, the legumes or whatever, will actually communicate and exchange nitrogen. And so... Um, if grass is growing near n near the clover, like right next door to it, then they'll share. And so the nitrogen that the clover is fixing will be shared with the grass. So either way, um, I, I guess there's a third way that, that they can put nitrogen in the soil is it takes nitrogen from the atmosphere and puts it in the soil directly um, through whatever process. But either way, the legumes are important to help bring back the natural balance of nitrogen and everything in the soil. The other thing, too, is um, the other minerals, the P and the K and the micronutrients, those are supposedly readily available in the soil. Um, they're, they're, ready, they're, they're available in the soil. They're just not accessible to the plants. And so what you're doing when you fertilize your field, what was that about? What you're doing, I guess you're still running manure out there, is you're putting a form of those chemicals, um, those nutrients in your soil that the plants can access. But the other way that you get those is to allow the bacteria and the fungus and everything to do their job. And the plants will actually... Uh, send little messages to the microbiomes, microbes, microbiomes, <laughs> microbes in the soil, and uh, they'll they'll stimulate. They'll send sugar down, you know, because plants generate sugar using photosynthesis. That's what the green color is, is the chlorophyll, and so sunlight plus carbon dioxide, evil carbon dioxide. It's going to destroy the planet, apparently. Sunlight plus the carbon dioxide plus the water um, combine using a, a process that's not entirely obvious. It involves a lot of quantum mechanics and, you know, but uh, in the end, they convert the carbon dioxide and the uh, water into sugar, right? Sugar is basically carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Water is hydrogen and oxygen. And carbon dioxide is carbon and oxygen, right? So it converts it to sugar. And the sugars are sent down to the roots where the plant will feed bacteria and funguses. And those in turn will, will leach the nutrients that the plant needs out of the soil in a natural way. And so even in poor soils, you can uh, free up those minerals that are necessary into a state that the plants can actually access and use. So that's my plan is not to use chemicals at all um, because I'm a cheapskate. Um, but really the, 
the real reason not to use chemicals is it disrupts the natural processes. And I, I want to, to encourage those natural processes to do their things. Get nature working for me rather than against me. So, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like run out here and say like, oh, it's a weed, we gotta kill it. You know, um, there's some horse nettle um, back in that first pasture. I didn't show you guys, I was in a rush. Um, but we had a whole big section of the pasture that was horse nettle. And of course you read about horse nettle, it says, oh, if the horses eat this, they die. Or whatever it is, you know. And it's, it's, it's poisonous for cows and sheep and everything and can't let them have any. Well, I had a big patch of horse nettle. And I said, you know what, let's just see what happens. If the cows die, oh well, right? You know, I'll buy some more. And the cows left it alone. They didn't eat it at all. They trampled it a little, you know. But then I come back this year in that horse nettle patch. And I expected a whole bunch of horse nettle. But no, it's just a couple pieces here and there. So, and there was another place over here in my property where I had a, a stand of horse nettle. And I decided to just pull them out with my glove, you know. It was kind of funny because the cows came by and one of them smelled one of them and, and munched on a little bit. But, you know, they just left it alone. But I just pulled them out like a weed, like in your garden. And as far as I could tell, there's no horse nettle there anymore. So apparently um, a few minutes of work was worth all the chemicals in the world, you know. And the best part is, is I'm pretty sure my my mechanical uh, weeding process of reaching down, grabbing the weed and pulling on it uh, didn't disturb the soil that much, you know. So, and hopefully the horse nettle decayed into valuable nutrients for future generations of different plants. So, yeah, the highly scientific method of working with nature by using your hands. Anyway, so I'm willing to trade labor for chemicals. And that's my philosophy right now is, is find like a, a process that requires labor that machines can't do, you know, um, that relies on our natural instincts and our senses. Um, one of the things Greg Judy explains in his books is uh, rotational grazing is not a science. Um, you know, he has all kinds of ideas about what works and what doesn't. And he tries them out. He sees what happens. He's tried out lots of things. But really, when it comes to it, you get out there with your eyes and ears. And you look at what's going on. And you listen. And you smell, right? And let your brain, which is a fantastically marvelous, wonderful machine, way beyond the capacity of all the super supercomputers super in the world. Probably always will be, because we still don't understand what's going on inside that noggin. But you get your brain out here, and uh, you'll start to figure out what nature is doing and how to work it. That's our job, right? Cows eat grass, and they make meat, and babies, well, we watch the whole process and analyze and think and make plans. And we, um, you know, we're, at heart, we're businessmen. We're trying to allocate resources in an efficient way. To produce something that everybody wants, you know. In this case, I'm just stretching out a couple feet of wire every day, hoping to get some good beef. I like steak. Yum yum yum. Anyway, natural processes. Let nature do her thing. This is metal tag. Oh, I actually touched metal tag. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great day. Take care and bye bye.